Johnny Deneen says Paul Nichols will have zero winners at Cheltenham. No winners whatsoever. Brave man's game. No chance in the Gold Cup. A million to one. Look what I've got. Johnny Deneen talking to Paul Nichols. I still don't think he's going to take the places under at the same time, you know what I mean? It's not all about Cheltenham for me, but if you've got horses good enough, let's get there and have a go, you know? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> So Johnny, this is Paul Nichols. This is the same Paul Nichols that has trained 46 Cheltenham Festival winners. This is the same Paul Nichols that has trained four Cheltenham Gold Cup winners. But you do not think he's going to train a Cheltenham Festival winner next month? Well, uh, to be fair now, David, that was about two or three months ago at the same time. So, like, you, now, yeah. just because he's sitting beside <laughs> you, Johnny, doesn't mean you have to change your tune. Well, uh, you are we'll allowed, find out what yeah. kind of a man you are today. Yeah, OK. Well, you are, you are allowed to revise your opinion, I presume, at the same Especially time. Especially when they're sitting beside yeah, you. Exactly. But look, um, look as, as Paul said earlier on, it, it, who would have fancied Arsenal three months ago in the Premiership? Like, things change and, listen... I think he's in a better position now to have winners or winner. Like I still don't think he's going to take the place of Sunder at the same time. You know what I mean? But he's got, he's definitely capable of having a winner or two at the same time. Yeah, without a doubt. Look, if you said to me three months ago, would I fancy Brave Man's game? I'd say definitely no chance. But now, when you do, when you look at the field and and and, and the depthness of it now, I think he has definitely some sort of a chance at the same time. You know. How is your team shaping up, Paul? It's great to have you yeah, here. By the way, thanks yeah, for having yeah, us. It's good. Yeah, yeah. And the game's all about opinions, isn't it? Um, and like. Johnny said things have changed from the start of the season because, you know, the more you get into the season, the more those young horses improve. Or, you know, Brave Man's games hit the target. Things change, of course they do. And, you know, we got horses there. If I'd looked at it at the start of the season, I'd have been thinking, oh, yeah, we've got some nice horses. But Tamaris, look what he's done. He's improved one of grade one. Hermes Allen, as I said to you earlier, back before he we went to Stratford in September, I didn't even think we... I don't, I don't know what I thought, really, because he didn't show us a lot at home. Last spring, I kept saying to John Hales and... Guys at own him, Alec and um, John Diver and Jed. God, I'm not sure about this horse. He doesn't show too much at home because he went to Stratford and he ended up winning 28 lengths, then won at Cheltenham and then won, won the Challow Hurdle. So they do surprise you as the season goes on, then you start getting a better team of players, as it were. And yeah, we got, you know, he's quite a nice stage star winning on Trials Day, Il Rodito winning on Trials Day, Hacker Plus is winning on Trials. They're all horses that can go there and, and hopefully give us, you know, an exciting time but you know getting winners at that meeting as we said is is hard and, and do you know what funny enough I still think the whole team's headed up by Brave Man's Game I think he's got as good a chance as any of our runners during the week. So Johnny what's changed with Brave Man's Game then obviously we spoke a few months ago and you were quoting him at a, a million to one <laughs> a million to one to win the Gold Cup what's changed for you with Brave Man's Game in the last couple of months? Well uh, 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 the, the ability to close out races anyway has, uh, that he has nowadays is, is a thing that I didn't have in his in his arm or, or Mary maybe coming into the start of the year you know uh, like put it this way the, the fact that he can put away Lom Press that makes him a runner because Lom Press himself was a big runner now unfortunately he's, he's out but like if you if like has Brave Man's game more ability than a horse like Statler? Of course he has. Of course he has a lot more ability. Like Statler wouldn't win the King George in a million years. No, there are different tracks and there's different mm. distances, slightly different two and a half furlongs up a hill at the finish. Look, I just like the way he's closing out races. Now the, the way he the way he finished off the King George, his jumping is immaculate. So if you, like if you're going, like, there's a lot of I don't even know how many jumps there is in the Gold Cup. Twenty, thirty. Yeah, twenty-two. Is it? Is it? Yeah. yeah. But like, if you're yeah. almost certain that you're not going to touch a twig, it's a big bonus going out. Like. Uh, on, when you're facing a horse like Brave Men's Game, I think. Look, I'm not saying he win. I still don't think he will win, maybe, but he definitely has a better chance than I thought he had. What did you learn something about Brave Man's Game in the King George <laughs> that you that you didn't know beforehand? Well, yeah, I mean, he stayed on really strongly, and he just showed he's a proper mature horse now. Um, he didn't have the best passage all the way round, as we were talking about no. earlier. And I'm thinking, oh my God, that's not going to help us. He turned in the straight. Harry Gimmer slapping in. He, he, he actually changed gear between the third last and the second last, and Harry almost sat up on him. 
Came a dig from the back of the second ass and he took off and stayed on strong. Now to win a King George, oh, everyone says, oh, it's an easy track. Kempton, they go a gallop all the way. You hardly get a chance to get a breather and they've got a jump and get, you've got to stay to win a King George. And I've won it with Seymour Business and Corto and they ended up winning Gold Cups. So uh, uh, the one thing he's got in his favour now, he's a mature, he is twice the horse he was last season. He was a bit of a shell to last year. Um, you saw him this morning, he looks fantastic. He looks unreal, um, yeah. He is a different animal this year. A lot of us have improved this year. We've done a few things differently. Um, and I just love the way he, he travels in a race, which is great. You don't want to be behind the bridle in a Gold Cup if you can help it, and you need to be able to jump. So he can sit where he's happy, um, he jumps nicely, and he, you know, he, he's got that ability. To, the great thing about Chantham as well, if you've got plenty of boot, you can travel down that hill twice, especially the last time, from the top of the hill, travel down the hill, fill your lungs up, ready to you know, ultimately gallop up the hill. Um, so yeah, I think it's a more open race than, than people may well think. The favourite's probably the one we've got, all got to beat, but it's a Chantham Gold Cup and everything in there has ultimately got a chance. But take the favourite out, I wouldn't swap him for anything. And I'm very happy with it. Forget what he did last spring. He, he was not right last spring. A lot of mine weren't right. I mean, he's probably 50 kilos heavier this year than what he was last year. And as I tried to explain earlier, if I did three times up our hill with him any of the previous seasons, he'd fall apart or he couldn't cope with it or he'd struggle. And Scott would say to me, don't do any more threes. It doesn't suit him. Now he bangs up that hill three times as you want. So he's got mature now and means you get probably higher levels of fitness and he's ready, he's ready hopefully to perform at his very best. So Johnny, if myself and Paul <coughs> had a collection for you here outside the Manor Inn, and we scraped together maybe 20 quid to have on something in the Gold Cup, what would you back at this moment in time in the Gold Cup? Um, what would I back in? That's a good question. I, yeah. I, I don't have a, a huge opinion. If, if you force me... Yeah, well I am. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I look, I I, am. I'll go with... Uh, Look, I'd, I'd go maybe with Statler, even though I don't think I do, even though I think it hasn't got the raw ability as some of the horses in the race. Sometimes the Gold Cup is won by a, a, a strong, strong steer. It mightn't be won by the sexy horse. Like the, the two sexy horses are probably galloping the champ in Brave Men's Game. Yeah. But, but you'd be hoping maybe they turn into a war of attrition and maybe Statler, who stays obviously three miles and six did it last year, he might just wear down the, 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 the horses with the, the raw ability. You know, that if kind you of way. run your race, you'd be disappointed if Statler beats. Yeah, I probably would be. I'd be, yeah, I'd be disappointed as we're training if you got beat anyway. You know, you're going into the race thinking that you're preparing for the best, the biggest race he's ever run in his life off the back of a great preparation. And of course, you, you want to win. And if you don't win, you're disappointed. That's why we do this. There's no point thinking, oh, you know, you've got to have that mentality a little bit. But yes, it's a fantastic race. And I know you've been there so many times that these races take a lot of winning. Everyone's got to go right for you. But I, I've just got that feeling that he is, he is in the, the, the right place at the right time. And I was, you know, King George winner. He, he's, it doesn't mean he's, he's just one dimensional, you know. He ran very well at Cheltenham two years ago when he was a young mm. horse. And um, he travelled well and jumped well around and just wasn't good enough Harry or strong couldn't, enough. couldn't believe that day what happened, couldn't he not? And, and Rachel? He, he thought Bob Ollinger joined in at the second last. He, <laughs> he just went past him and, and just... He, he was astounding. He thought we ran our race and he, you know, he'd won a Chalo and one thing or another, but that form wasn't necessarily that strong. But he was a weak, immature horse then. He's a much fitter, stronger horse now. Um, and he's trained on, whereas probably you could argue Bob Ollinger hasn't trained on. And sometimes he that definitely could well, argue yeah, that. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, he, he looks like he can't raise a gallop nowadays. Yeah. I don't know why, because he looked so full of potential. Yeah. But, you know, and, and, and that's the thing horses do improve as they get older and more mature. And I'd like to think he's in a good place. Yeah, Gallop in the Shams, Paul. What's your thoughts on him? Well, you know, he, 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 he would have won last year, wouldn't he, as he wanted, but it's only a small field, and he's a very talented horse. I mean, funny enough, at Leopardstown the other day, you thought for a minute, if he didn't jump the last, he might have been in trouble, but he jumped the last, and he stays on strong, and he gallops through the line strong, so that's what you need at Cheltenham, also, he gallops through the line strong, but, you know, he, he, yeah, he's a short price favourite. He, 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 to me, he's probably short enough, but he is a very talented horse. If I, if I could give you one horse in the race to train, if I could buy one for you now, who would you like to train? I would probably train the favourite. Yeah. I, I, Stupid I, I, question, really, wasn't it? Well, no, but I mean, it's a very valid question. You know, I could let like, Dan, my mate, train, and, and a lot of my pals, they and Jed and Alec go and protect the crap. But, you know, he, I think for him to be at his very best, he needs a ground very soft and very tested. And he was disappointing the other day. I thought, I thought he'd win it, Charlton, the other day. I thought he was going to win the Gold Cup. He had to win the other day. 
So unless Dan's performed miracles, I think he's got it all to do. You um, fancy protector, well, don't you, Johnny? But I did, I've always not. fancied him all year, funny <laughs> enough. But the Have other you? Day, the, the other day, well, I thought he was very good in the Betfair chase. But as it turned out, I suppose Froden was third and Froden only run the week before. Perhaps that form wasn't that strong. Tire pulled off yeah, so who knows. Um, and the favourite's the one to beat. Um, obviously, we're in 2023 now. You've had some fantastic years. Like the, the Cotto star, the Denmans, the masterminded. Time moves on, people move on. Is this, is this the most excited you've been maybe in the last kind of decade or so going into Cheltenham? Is this the strongest team you have going into Cheltenham? Um, it, it, yeah, it's, you know, it's like yeah, those days we were so fortunate with amazing horses and, that, and it's going it, to, you know, it takes a time to get, we'll never get those days back with those horses. But it's, it's Never? Also, you don't think ever no, you'll not, see that again? Not when you're, 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 you were rolling out Masterminded, Neptune Colonge, Cordo Star, Demon, Big Buck, Celestial Halo, go on and on. They were unbelievable horses. You know, we you know, for you know one week we nearly won all all the big ones. A short head with Cecilia from the champion and win all the big ones. Um, and I think you know those were horses of a lifetime. I'm incredibly, incredibly privileged to have had those and done so well. And it wasn't it was never going to happen again overnight. But we're just beginning to build up a lovely team of young horses now and horses that can be competitive in, in these races. To me, it's not all about Cheltenham. Yeah, I'm excited about next week, but I'm actually more excited about the thought of Hermes, Allen and Tamara's going chasing chase next season and the future, what it holds for them. So it's not the be all and end all and everyone says, oh yeah, you don't mean that. But I actually do. But, you know, Cheltenham. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Cheltenham's great. We all want winners at Cheltenham. Um, but, um, you know, if I look back at some of the Cheltenham winners I've had, I've always basically been the, cord- the grade one winners, the, the best horses in the best race. So it's down to you then to get those horses in the best shape possible on that day. And they shouldn't get beat. You know, they should win if they're the best horses. So at the end of the day, we're talking, you, need, you need top, top class horses to be competitive at Cheltenham. I think the handicaps are hard to win, especially ours, because I think in this country we tend to sort of get stuck in and run them a lot, and they're probably well exposed by the time they get there. Um, but it's just fantastic to be involved in it and have a, have a lovely team. How frustrating is it for you? To have Willie Mullins, 10 winners last year at the Cheltenham Festival. At this moment in time when we're filming, he has 13 favourites mm. at the Cheltenham Festival. Is that like, are you grinding your teeth going, or I honestly, how do you deal with it? I honestly never think about it. And that is the honest truth. We, I don't got, believe that. I've, no, well, I've got enough to do dealing with what I deal with here and win as many races as I can with the horses I've got. And, you know, also we try and win the Trainers' Championship. We, but, you know, you've got to focus on what you've got. And I think that the, the Irish racing and the English racing are poles apart. And I concentrate on what we're doing here and getting as much as we can out of what we can here. And Willie's obviously doing one. And he's got a huge team of horses. I, I mean, I've got 150 and I wouldn't want any more. I couldn't deal with any more. That's a great number of horses. So you're not going to have the amount they've got to run at Cheltenham. Um, but yes, what a position to be in to have all those horses. But then I look back 2007, 8, 9 when I had all those, everyone must have been saying the same. Not in the same numbers, but you know, all those fantastic horses winning all those big races. It's so, you're so privileged to have those. And, and you're lucky that you've got horses that are good enough to win. And in those days, I was able to go and buy the nice horses. Everyone followed us to France. And now the things change completely on its head. And you know, the sales are anyway. Willie and Gordon end up buying nearly most of the best horses. And Willie's in the fortunate position that he gets sent the best horses. So they have got that advantage. But you know, good on them. You know, they do really well. They get the best out of them. And I like to think I get the best out of what I've got at home. Cheltenham is where we all meet, um, and it's hard to beat them, of course it is. Um, but it does go a, bit, a little bit in circles, mm. a little bit. And um, it's not all about Cheltenham for me. Yeah, we want to be there competing, of course we do. Uh, and that's probably why I didn't have too many runners there last year. I didn't have a runner, I think, on the first day, because you want to go there with someone known full well before you start. You've got no chance of winning whatsoever, because you know. So you, you try and plot elsewhere with them. But if you've got horses good enough, let's get there and have a go, you know. It's a big week for you, Johnny, obviously, Cheltenham. What do you think his best chance is, if he is to get one on the board this year? Is there one horse of his that you're definitely going to be getting stuck into this year? Well, maybe not getting stuck into it, but I do think Hermie Allen is a good chance, very good chance, yeah. Like, I don't think that the, the Irish horses in that race are, like, they're, they're not, to me, there's no world beater amongst them now. Maybe, maybe Hermie Allen might, might, might just come out and top in that race. Look... I don't, as you said, I don't see a dov- Duvan or a Vatour in the, of the Irish horses. There's nothing really sticking out like Cham Coyles and them, you know, mm. even in Perry Pass. It's hard to know how good that horse is. Like, in, uh, Hermie Allen, to me, is, is like, he's, it's, it's, it's an easy one to answer because he's the shortest price favourite you have anyway. You know what I mean? So mm. it, it's probably, bookies reckon it's, it's your best chance. And it probably is. It probably mm. is. I like his style of running. 
and like he said, running, he'll be out ridden prominently anyway, and he's a great jumper, and it can be hard to catch good jumpers. I, I think it always, I always like to be out in front anyway, or in that area anyway, to be honest. So when you're, when you're looking at races now at Cheltenham, Johnny, <coughs> and you have Irish form versus English form, yeah, are they on two different levels at the minute? Is the Irish form much stronger than... We'll talk about novice hurdles, just say. Obviously, Hermes mm. Allen is favourite of Ballymore. We have the Grade 1 at the Dublin Racing Festival. We had the, the Lawlers and Ace novice hurdle. Are you putting Irish form here and you're putting shallow hurdle form here? How are you ranking the, the form going in? Look, look it, it, it's not easy to rank them w- without any bit of... Collateral, maybe collateral form. form. But the, the performance of we've all been caught in, 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 in um, Leperstown was, if, if, was worrying from the English point of view, in my eyes. Like, unless there was something that came to light with that horse's performance. Like, if, if that's as good as the English form is, the English horses are in trouble. Like, Hermie Allen only beat, we've all been caught by whatever, eight, ten lengths that day, was it? Yeah. So, like, we've all been caught with beat going to the second last in Leperstown, they couldn't walk in the race. So, do you know, may- maybe he wasn't right, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't I don't right. think he ran his race. Yeah, probably. Well, funny enough, I don't, he ran, like, I sent Frodon and Grenatine over last year, and they both ran shocking races. Yeah. And I think that's why we're not so keen. It's quite a yeah, hard thing why? this time of season to travel them over there. Mm. It's cold, they're going to a new a place. It's it's almost a wrong time of year for us to be going over there, mm. um, and you don't see too many Irish horses coming over yeah. there. The only yeah. they have sent a few over. Only, I think only I can think of G- Gordon's also the only one that's won at Sandown the other day. It's quite hard to do that, and I, I don't think that horse ran his race the other yeah. day. Maybe in, not, in yeah. And, yeah. But you know, going back to Hermes Allen, he, he's done nothing wrong. He surprised me all the way along the line. The form of the child is working out well because whether horses pulled up behind him or. Um, ran fourth, fifth, sixth. They've all gone out and won since. And you know, school of thought. I was listening. To someone said, "Oh well, he was the only one who went in the ground." Well, believe me, me, I, I was in two minds whether to take him out in the morning because I didn't think he'd go on that ground, and he just kept galloping through. And that's just sheer ability. So that was a good sign. Um, and yeah, I think he's got a lovely chance. That's the thing. It's a competitive race, but he, he, he'd like to think he's got a lovely chance. Um, the Dublin Racing Festival. I give out saying it's a disgrace. Mm. Why aren't English trainers, you know, sending horses <coughs> over? And Johnny Deneen in the Racing Post said he can't believe there was even two runners. You couldn't believe it. You said, why on earth would they send? Yeah, well, that's well, what's your thoughts on it? My reading of it is, look, there's plenty of races over here if you want to get English horses ready. There's no need to go in and put, and put your uh, head into the, into the lion's mouth as, as such that early. Do you know, I, do, I think you should keep your, your card cl- relatively close to your chest. Like, put it this way, if... if just say you brought um, Tamouris to the mm. two-mile race. Just mm. a pure hypothetical thing I'm talking about here. You bring him to the two-mile race and he, and he beats Fasal Vega on merit, say. Just say Fasal Vega performed to, to his, somewhere near his ability anyway. But he won that race, say Tamouris came to win the two-mile race. Now, how would you feel then if they went to the, the, the Supreme and would he want to produce something else? Because he knew Fasal Vega wasn't going to be enough to beat Tamouris. And he comes and pips you on the day that you really want to win. I, I don't see any reason. I, I can't get the, the, the clamouring for Irish, from Irish people for English people to go over uh, bring their horses. I think that's madness as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, he could be a race planner. <laughs> yeah, he could be. No, <laughs> I, a job I, for Johnny. I, I agree. It's nothing about. It is just a hard time. We got our own races over here to run. Now, it wasn't the Dublin Festival. It was the same meeting. Neptune Colonge won the the um, the Gold Cup, as it were. The Hennessy back, back, then. back then, because. He was third in line for the Gold Cup over here with behind Denman and um, Cordo Star. So I had nothing to lose by sending him over there. And he ran and won, and then he came over to the Gold Cup. And I think that year, I don't know whether he was a second or third, he ran really well. Then he went and won the Punches Town Gold Cup. Um, but it's the timing a little bit. I had nothing like, I like more than going to Down Royal, winning races, Punches Town in particular. You know, I like think I might have a few more to go to Punches Town this year. It's the timing right for us. And, and I looked at the whole lot of horses that I had, and there was nothing at all that I had that needed to be going there. Mm. I probably was good enough to be going that time. We're going to get them at our best. We want to be going to Cheltenham. And I wouldn't have gained anything by sending Hermes Allen or Tamaris or Brave Man's Game out there. No, but Brave Man's Game, uh, to me, around Leopardstown would be the most fantastic track oh, to run yeah. him in. I'd love him, but I don't need to. Yeah. I actually don't need to. So what's the point, you know? So. I've read lots of things that just makes me smile, you know. You, you, you can only do what's best for your own team, your own horses, at the right time. And, you know, we'll have a, we'll have a runner there. I tent two last year, that didn't work out, and Nigel will be thinking twice about it now, probably. But um, it's got to be the right horse at the right time. Are you a good judge? If you weren't a trainer, would you be a good punter? Uh, probably not, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't bet that often. Um, 
And the trouble is, our, I have to focus on my horses and what I think and have my opinion, not worry about other people's. You, yeah, you always look at form and think, oh, whatever, that's going to be hard to beat or this, this. But you've got, to, you've got to know everything about your own horse. And you've got to go out there being positive and think your own horse is going to win. Otherwise, there's no point doing it. Mm. So if you're punting, you're probably back at war. <laughs> so that's why I don't bet because I, I, yeah, I might have the odd bet from time to time, not very often, but I don't because I've got enough else to think about worrying about betting. But... Um, you know, you go out there thinking, I'm lucky this year our strike rate's 30% and one and three are actually winning, so we've not been far wrong, but there's two out of three that lose it if you look at it that the other way. So punting doesn't really interest me. Well, tell me all. this, secret between me and you, <coughs> have you back Brave Man's game for the Gold Cup? No. Nope. Any fancy prices? No, nope, not As at all. I have not had one bet at Cheltenham. <coughs> you, you haven't? No. Nope. No. Nope. I thought you might have been on as a novice at no. 50 to 1 no, or something. No, no, no. No. As I said, I've got enough else to think about without worrying about that. I was just looking on my phone actually to see, to see if um, I'd had any bets at Charm at all. I haven't got one, so there we are. And sometimes oh, a year time. ago, you know, at times, you know, you, you think a year in advance, like you say, I, you know, I like a little, sometimes they have the odd anti post big price, but not this year. Sorry lads, sorry, sorry. Do you want over £200 of free bets from your favourite bookmakers? Visit www.racingpost.com forward slash free bets to find out more. Now this year we were driving <coughs> up to, to, or today we were driving up to to ditch it in the in the car, a, a fabulous <laughs> Fiat Punto, which is uh, me and Johnny crammed into it. I think there was only room for two, Johnny. We wouldn't have fit any passengers in anyway, that's true. But we, we were talking about what we were going to talk to Paul about. And one of the things that fascinated you was time and how trainers have time to do everything. So just tell us what you were telling me, I suppose. No, I suppose it's just, it's, it's, the, it's the, the thing about maybe getting up real early in the morning. Like, yeah, wouldn't be a fan of that. well, whatever. You have, what time do you get up at five, six o'clock in the morning? I, I, I always try and get up at the yard about twenty past six every morning. Yeah, I meet Clifford and Charlie, my yeah. sister. Yeah. Like that's early, and the, like you, it, obviously the trainers like high profile. They kind of burn the candle both ends, kind of stuff. Like if you, okay, you've, you've, you're up early, you're doing these lots, then you're tearing away to you put on a suit or something, changing your clothes, tearing away to the race course, then meeting owners having a drink or whatever with them or the lunch or whatever then you're waiting all day for a race maybe runners in the last couple of races you have to stay there all day then you're taking you could be two three hours away as well you wouldn't be hoping to and like when you come home in the evening do you like check around the horses all that kind of stuff or does other people do? no you, i mean I, no i wouldn't get involved that clip would you okay know, i do every day when i'm with clifford you know, in my head lab with in the day the head lab the other they do all that but there is an element of socializing yeah. attached to a trainer's life isn't there like you know yeah, what i mean? like that bit of it yeah, <laughs> yeah you want somebody to socialize Paul <laughs> yeah. always used to say to me a busy man will always find time and you know you think about it, there's a lot of you know you've got to manage your time that's the thing and not you know, I don't go racing every day. Like, I've got to run it today at Hereford. There's no owners going. I'd send Charlie. Um, I'm not going to go to Kelso um, on Friday because, you know, I, I can do so much good at home. What I do when I go racing, then it's two or three hours in the car. I put that to good use, studying entries, ringing owners, texting owners. So you put that time to good use. So do you, dri you don't drive to no, race yourself? No, okay. no, always have someone drive me because otherwise I'd end up in trouble because you'd be on the phone all the time. My phone will never stop ringing all the way to the races and all the way home. So it's a good time to get some work done. But you have to manage your time. It's a 24-7 job, but um, I, as I said, I wouldn't do anything else. But you just manage your time. What's the best bit? Is it the mornings? Is it getting out there? seeing them all work, is it going to the races? I know winners is obviously the best bit, mm. but is there one part of it that you love? Like, you, you're, you're racing a lot more yeah. than other trainers. Yeah. Like, you like to be there. Yeah, I do. You like being there on the big days and the planet. I, I really enjoy the mornings. I love the mornings and just trying to get everything right and make sure that the, the most important job of our day is, is court by six to seven o'clock when we do that work list, when we make a plan of what we're doing, when they're going to run, this wants that, you know, getting that right. That's the most important bit of the day, to be honest with you. But I suppose the bit I, I love most is when I've had in my head for 18 months a uh, Brave Man's game of winner King George in 2022. And just working all the way along that, and it happens, it, it's, it's almost indescribable how, you know, that, is, that gives you so much pleasure and so much has gone into that. Those are the things I enjoy most. Was there a camera on you? 
in the finish the Brave Man's game. Were you giving it? Were you giving it socks? <laughs> you like to get stuck into no, one. Well, actually, to be honest with you, I, I do get annoyed when you have got a bloody camera stuck in your face when you're trying to watch a race. Oh, actually, sorry about that, Pratt. <laughs> but um, I, I got a little place at Kempton there, and uh, it, it's a little betting shop just off the side of the course. I was going creeping there out of the way, and then when it looks like they're winning over the last three, come on, yes! <laughs> <laughs> My favourite Paul and Nick <laughs> celebration where it any shadow of a doubt was the time top of the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. One that what is now the Brian Advisory yeah. beats uh, Delta work. Um, like that was that was that was a good furlong, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I, was going out, I had Paul Barber with me getting over excited, and one of the uh, two of the other owners, and uh, yeah, we give it plenty that day. But then that just shows you, you know, you watch Fergal O'Brien in the in the in Cheltenham. I mean, mm. he's he's probably the the best of all. Um, but that just shows you know what it does to you. And the minute you lose that, is the minute you want to give up. To be honest with you, you have got to enjoy those winners in those good days and. Yes, it's always embarrassing when you're getting filmed, but there we are. It happens. We enjoy it. it. Yeah, we enjoy I know it. that, exactly. You're good in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Johnny, we're, we're, me and you now, we, we do a show obviously called Up in the Ante, and one person gets more praise on that show than anybody, and that is Harry Cobden. To me, he's glorious to watch. Johnny, you're a massive fan. Yeah, I love Harry. I love backing him. And, and I love watching him riding. And, and, and the, the reason I love backing him is he's proactive. Like, I, I always think. Pro, being, being proactive is, is massive in a race, you know what I mean? And, and, and not, not being reactive, do you know? Mm. And, and, and taking the bull by the horns, especially in, sm- like, uh, I bet every day of the week, so I bet small races, as well as b- more so small races than big races, to be honest. So, like, when you back at one blunt to Harry Coblin and say, five to four on in Taunton, and the, the tapes go up and he's on the inside and the ping's the first, like, you just know, it's over. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, great he, example of Holtan here last week. Yeah, 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 exactly. He won by Tommy Jump yeah. the first. Yeah, exactly. Do you know, so, uh, like, I don't want to be on the guys that are 10 wide and, 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 and going around bends, like, around the wrong side of every bend and all that kind of stuff and coming at the last and all that kind of nonsense or coming, looking around and going to, not even going on about their business even a lot of the time. You know what I mean, I like the guy that seals the races and seals them early, you know? And unbelievably, like, the, we're, we're sitting here now because live on ITV Johnny Deneen was called out as uh, one of the worst tipsters that Johnny <laughs> Deneen after t- Tamuris won the Talworth okay we're sitting here now which is actually agreeing quite a lot here because you're, you're a similar approach to how you like your horses to be ridden you're like Johnny Johnny can stand horses being held up even horses that want cover Johnny doesn't want them having cover right he wants them no excuses territory and you're a similar kind of yeah, I like them ridden handy with a little bit of space so they can jump and gallop. I'm not necessarily one for going around the inside. I think you're getting a lot of trouble these days going around the inside. Don't think you actually save too much by doing that. And you notice Harry often goes a little bit wider. And I mean, sometimes he gave one the other day, a half a dozen, a most fantastic ride at Hereford. I mean, he'd walked the course beforehand and he knew the best ground was right under the, the, the local's garden fence all the way down the back straight, which he did switch wide, miss all the bad ground in one. He always walks the course beforehand. Um, I got the improvement in him the last 18 months is incredible. But I suppose he's like a horse, he's mature and he's, he's only a young fella, he's learning all the time. Uh, he makes mistakes, but he never makes them twice. And um, he's just a very, very good are you, are you, do you Do you wear your heart in your sleeve, right? So mm. just say if Harry doesn't give one. Now, I know we were talking about King George earlier and he ended up winning the race. But as you say, if he was beaten there and he was on the outside of long press. But if he does give one a bad ride... Are you straight? Look, Harry, you gave that a bad ride, or does he know your by the expression on your face? How how does that relationship grow? I suppose over time. Yeah. Well, it, he he rode to it taunt me the other day. He wasn't particularly impressed when he actually got up both of them and said that wasn't my finest hour. So when the jockey comes in and says that, what can you say? I mean, Ruby always used to. Be, I mean, that's the thing. At least he, Ruby would never make excuses. If he gave one a bad ride or come, he'd just come back in and say, "You can't say anything, can you?" You know. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's probably good when they know, that, but things don't always work out. You know, you're riding a horse in the race and things don't work out really. But, you know, we've always got a, a, a plan and, you know, you know we, we talk through a race, but I leave it to him. And more often than not, I'd love to be able to say, made, made or never headed like Hold Town Hero last week and he's out the gate and gone, yeah. you know, and, up, and um, he, he's very good. And he's just getting better. And it's, it's you know, I, I did the right thing taking him on a few years ago, not letting him go to Colin. Um, you were saying, like, that was a big, big move. Like, he was young, mm-hmm. you, you had a big team. Like, to, to put your faith in somebody like that, that was an experience. You obviously saw something. And I, I remember you saying you spoke to Sir Alex about it. Yeah, um, you know, uh, so I, often in those situations, you know, we'd have a little chat with Alec, and you, you know, he'd always say, if you want to chat about something, call me. So he'd always call him up and have a chat well, about it. There, no? <laughs> and he'd, he, you know, he said, never be afraid of um, making brave decisions. 
you can't hide from it. And he's right. And that was a tough one because I'm very fond of, 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 fond of Sam Twist and David C. Rodless, a lot of winners. He was doing well. But I had a number of owners who wanted Harry to come on board. He, he is basically in the Barber families, and Mr. Barber was very keen that he came on board as well. And that was obviously my decision. And we, we had a lot of talking and discussion. And, and it was either, well, if I could have put him out like a football on a two year free loan, and then had it back when I wanted. I might well have done it at that stage, but it doesn't happen in racing, so I had to make that brave decision. And and, and Harry had to agree to want to come and you know be number one here rather than go and ride his number one for Colin. And I, you know, we were getting stronger, and some of the others, especially Johnny Deller, he loved using him. He was getting more and more involved, so it worked out well for both of us really. Um, hard decision having to tell Sam, and I find those things you know quite tough to deal with. But you've got to you just got to go on with it. And you know, Sam wasn't getting sacked or anything like that. It's just. You know, as a younger striker, it was playing really well. He wanted to to be your um, centre forward, Absolutely. Um, and, and it probably was one of the best decisions I've ever made. From apart from when I took Ruby on, you know, it's been really good. Johnny, your favourite Paul Nichols trained horse ever? Or oh, Den Men, without a doubt. Would it, yeah. well, over Cotto. Oh yeah, I just love the relentless gallopers more so than the. Well, Cotto's a terrific horse, obviously, but uh, just the, the grinder or the whatever. There was something about Den Men, I don't know. Even a funny colour, wasn't he? Yeah, the tank. Yeah. There was, look, I don't know. It just, look, every, other people would pick Curtis. I wouldn't be arguing with anyone. It's but It's amazing, man. People do say that Denman yeah, was their exactly. favourite horse, funny enough. Yeah, yeah, I'd just have picked Denman over your man. That's all now, you know. Just that relentless galloping. Y- yeah, and the jumping and just, the, 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 even the day he won the Hennessy in Newbury. I was actually there that day. Just, that's, I don't know, what year was that? 2000? Oh, yeah, he was amazing. He won it twice, didn't he? Was it? Um, yeah, so he beat what a friend. Yeah. 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 One year. And then, yeah. No, it was, it was the first year he won oh, it. Oh, the first year, yeah. He yeah character yeah. building was in the race anyway. Mm-hmm. He was placed in it, I'm sure. Um, I'm not even sure what year, but like, what a, uh, just a, yeah, Tank is a good way of describing him, though, to be honest. Yeah, know. that was his nickname, Johnny, yeah. Yeah, and I know. When, but he, like, when he beat What a Friend that day, he had 11 stone 12, and What a Stone Friend, I think, had 10 1 or 2. And then What a Friend went on and won the Lexus and the, the Martel Cup. Mm-hmm. It was just astonishing to give a you know, a grade one winner to, to all that weight. But he, 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 he was a good horse. Um, but Corto was, I mean, they were next to each other. Corto was, the, you know, the fact that one year he was the best at two, two and a half, and three, mm-hmm. says it all. To win that year, he won the Old Roan, the Betfair Chase, the King George, the Denman Chase, and the Gold Cup all in that season was incredible. But, but, you don't think, natural ability wise, he's the best you've ever trained? Right. Now, you did ask me what, what was I felt at the most ab- raw ability. Raw ability, yeah. Um, and I'd have to say Big Bucks. Really? Yeah. He, was, he, had, he just had an engine and he could be relentless and he'd stay all day. Only thing he couldn't do is jump. <laughs> and now, he would, if he'd have ever jumped like those better horses, we'd have had a headache to start with because they'd all have been arguing over Ruby service if he'd been at the same time as Corto. <laughs> so it's just as well he didn't jump and we went back over hurdles with him. But if he had a jump fences really, really properly, he would have been a very good horse. You know, he'd have been, he was just, he just had it. He had everything. He'd switch off and he'd just cruise around with his ears pricked. And then when he said, come on, old boy, he was gone. And he, he, he was just bottomless, that pit. You know, he could, you know, he was, he, he definitely had huge amount of ability, but just couldn't jump. So jump racing, if you don't jump, you don't win. And deep down, did you know when you started schooling them and stuff, did you know, I'm going to struggle here now. Very this first is going to test. Really? The very first day we put him in our school, he couldn't even go around the corners. It was like he was stiff as a board. He was clueless. He could not go round, couldn't use himself, managed to get over from A to B, and um, he was just not a natural from the first day we started. Um, and we, we took him up on a hill and we put some, we tried everything to get him jumping. I remember that he did actually win a novice chase one day at Newbury one day, mm-hmm. jumped, I don't know, 12 fences, 12 different ways, and we schooled him the day before, and I'm thinking, oh my God. <laughs> he was okay, but he would chip in and, you know, and he would never have a cut at them. And, or, and anyway, he did end up, he won a grade one at Aintree over three miles as well and never jumped that day. Right. Would have, well, it was a matter of opinion. I think he'd have won that Hennessy when he unseated Sam at the last that day. He was just just ready to change gear and up the running, but didn't jump well enough. And then we went back over hurdles and the rest of it. But he, 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 he was just not very athletic. He couldn't use himself. He couldn't bend his back and hurdles finally could just flick away and step through them or whatever else. But he was talented. You won a few bob off him over the years, I'd say. He'd be your proper horse now, Big Bucks, right? He is a proper Johnny Deneen horse, I'd say. That's Shaw That's price, him. no nonsense, you know, finds plenty off the bridle. I'd say, I'd say he's won yeah, you a few bob off I'm not so sure, no, I can't even remember. I, I, don't think I, was, I, was, I, was in his, I don't think it was in his camp that often, though, because that was a bookie that time in Chetlam. 
and like even money sh in, in 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 the in the stairs hurdle, he was even definitely even one year anyway. Oh, anyway, yeah, like they're the kind of horses you'd, you'd want to be opposing. You'd be just hoping for the best rather than betting against the horse. So that's a lot of the time. Bookies do a lot of that anyway. Like hoping they do a lot of hoping for the best rather than saying, like when I was laying maybe big books, I never actually thought, like I really fancied them to get beat. But you're just hoping that's all you're doing yeah. a lot of the time, you know. And you're saying to yourself, even money, short price in Cheltenham, you take your chances and. That was it, you know. You, you pay your, you pay the price. In the four years he won the stairs hurdle, would you, have, you would have lost money on the race, obviously. Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm definitely laid that French horse the first year he was in it. Has Bablis? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Because, okay. because, uh, like, the f you, I'd be anti the French when they come to Chelsea. They never win a race there, do they? Like, really, to be honest. And they can, the jockeys can't ride anyway for starters, most of them. So look, oh, like, hello I, to I, all our French viewers. I, <laughs> I, I definitely would be against a, a French short price favourite anyway, if ever one of them ever turned up. Barracuda was a horse previously. No, no, he did win a few times at the same time. They were running the stairs hurdle this year. No, that's you? no chance. We'll stop. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> What's your thoughts on big punters like Johnny that make their living out of punting? Oh, to be honest, you never really thought of it. What a tough game that would be because they could, have, you know, if they're looking at a race, they could look at everybody's horses. Mm -hmm. I look at a race, really just concentrate on my own. That's hard enough job. You know, you, you've got to know the form and know what's going on. The same with Johnny, we'd have to know the form a little bit, but I, I don't spend hours looking at it. But if you're punting, you need to get it right, I suppose. So, tough old job. I wouldn't want to be doing it. You've watched up in the ante before. What do you think of him? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. I was teasing him earlier this year when I texted you, said, What sort of tips do I say? You haven't said three of my. There's a few curses three, in there as well. Three of my favourites uh, on a Saturday wouldn't win, and they all did. That made me smile. But um, I was, as you said, I said to you afterwards, I said, I'm only teasing. Um, I like it was that a game, It's a game of opinions, though, and everybody has opinions on different sides of the fence. And no one has a bigger opinion than Matt Chapman, and I love giving him plenty of stick. Yeah. And, and it's just friendly banter. Just, you know, everyone's got a job to do, and get on with it and try and make it as interesting as you can. Yeah, and like, you're great. Like, w we were out this morning, and it was a terrific morning um, out on the gallops. And uh, you like, you, you play the game. Like, you want to promote the sport. We're here today. You're not one to shy away from the camera and stuff. You don't mind welcoming people over here. Uh, no, yeah, I, I love like, showing you guys around this morning. You've you know, seen what we do and how it operates and the team and the staff and the horses and everything. Yeah, and, and why not? And it's a wonderful game. I mean, I just love it and I couldn't do anything differently. Um, yeah, it has a few problems at the moment, but everything in life has a few problems and we, we sort of get over it all. But it's a wonderful sport and wonderful game and I, I like showing what we do. We were on the gallop this morning, Paul. Like it's 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 a strenuous gallop. Like it's proper uphill. Um, we were talking about you know horses that worked well for you over the years. Is there any horse that you thought I found the next one here? This is going to be my next Carter Star or Denman or, and then it turned out to be an absolute flop. Uh, there's there's plenty of those horses that work brilliantly at home. We always call them morning glories. And they tend to let you down. The best horses, funny enough, are often ones that are slow that you think, oh, what the hell have I got here? And I said to you earlier, some of the best ones I've had, Neptune Colonge, Silvan Conti, Denman, Hermes Allen now, showed you nothing at home. And it's only when they're on the track and the fit that you realise what you've got. And they always tend to be the best ones. Cordo Star, funny enough, he was, he was a one-off. He was like unbelievable from the first day we ever worked to him. He was a machine. He was literally, whether it went up the hill, down the park, he was just a machine. He could come in out of the field, having been out there three months, fat as a pig, and he'd cruise up that hill first time just like that, not even being fit. But there's not many like that. He, he's probably in the best workhorse we've ever had here. Um, but there are lots of horses, uh, you know, especially the young horses, store horses, that you're working away over them, and the lads go, oh, this is a flying machine, this is a flying machine, and you look forward to running them, and then, oh, okay, if that's a flying machine, we're in trouble. <laughs> and then someone else, there was one I remember at the end of last season, there was one, I won't mention any names, but it'd been in all year. I couldn't run it because I thought that she was quite backward. And I worked with something two or three times, and that horse happened to run and finish last or second last or whatever. And the lad who rode it pulled it at work on a Saturday and said, this will never, ever win a race. It's too slow. Don't want to know. It's just useless. OK, I've got to tell the owner sometimes. I'm going to give it one run and just see. What happens? Goes to Worcester, makes all and bolts in. So it just shows you, you can never be really sure. You've got to run them. And it's what happens on the track that counts. It's not what happens on the gallops at home. And as I said this morning, we don't over gallop them. <coughs> Further size of whatever goes, five furlongs. But it's lots of hard graft, lots of heart and lungs fitness. And you know what you've got when they run. It doesn't take long to work them out after they've run. Uh, me seven, Johnny got a fright this morning, I have to say. We got out of the car and then we heard you saying, uh, oh yeah, he'll go to Fat Club. 
And now I thought you were talking about me, but, but no, <laughs> you do have a, a, is it a fat club yeah. for the horses? No, we just call it Fat Boys Club. There's fat Boys Club, half yeah. Half a dozen big geldings that like, um, huge and taken a lot more work than some of the others to get them fit. And so on a Thursday, uh, when the others are having a quieter today, which involves doing two up the hill, even though it's a quieter day, Fat Boys go off down on the bottom gallop and go and do six or eight each way round in the sand so they sweat a good bit, come back having a wash and just seems to work but some there what are some that, yeah, yeah, the yeah. <laughs> there are some horses that actually do need like plenty of weight to get get them fit, get that weight off the work to get that weight off them and keep them in trim and you know, you if the, as I said this morning trying to explain the key to it all is fitness. Um do you think you're a better trainer now than you were twenty years ago? Oh without a shadow of doubt. Um all the experience I've got and Clifford's got now and the facilities we got, we should be, you know, and you just still never stop learning in this game and we always tweak and do different things, but the experience we've got, as I said, in the facilities, I don't think we could do things much differently, but we just keep learning and keep doing the best we can. Do you think Paul Nichols is a better trainer now than he was 20 oh, years definitely. ago? Definitely, of course he is. As you said, he's got the better facilities, better everything. Everything's better nowadays, anyway. Mm. Just one question I'd like to ask you. That's fine, yeah, go on ahead. Um, do you know what all these work riders now, or these young girls and boys and whatever? Have you got any fella that that rides out for you there, and and he turns around someday and he coming in off the gallop and said, "This is a proper horse that you know is he definitely knows what he's talking about." Yeah, um, yeah, definitely it happens all the time. Um, one of my best work riders is a guy called Scott Marshall who rides Braidman's right. Game and Clan and Tamarus, but. You know, he, he, I remember early in the season, Tamaris, and Tamaris actually was like an ordinary, he won a bumper at Wing Cant, got beat yeah. at Foss, nice horse, but wouldn't ever blown you away. I remember early in the season, Scott said, this is a machine, this is a proper horse. Right. And you respect their judgment, yeah, and he yeah, does yeah. someone like that. And to be honest with you, if we, we want to find out about someone, you'd often let Scott ride it. And you yeah, know, yeah, that's what I was interested in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to know what you've got, you sometimes put your better riders on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it still doesn't really, you don't oh, I know, really I know. you get on the trap. But you soon, you, you pretty well know one is totally useless at home. Okay. You can be up on that hill and watching them struggle to counter up the hill. And they don't change as they get fitter. Right. Where some horses can struggle a bit when they first come in, but as soon as they get fitter, they tank up over there, you know. Okay. And then it's a matter of then working out what ability, level of ability they've got when they run. Right. And you have yeah. so many nice surprises like Hermes Allen and Stairway Faye is another one who doesn't show much at home with one very nicely the first day, a bit unlucky the other day, and Tamaris, they improve. Uh, would, you, would you ever get a horse say that you give, say they give like 400,000 for out of an Irish point to point, wins a four year old maiden somewhere, mm. arrives to you and kind of like falls away, kind of like. Oh, yeah, that happens. Does that happen too, yeah? Time. Yeah, I mean, it does happen, and sometimes you. You know, you're very excited about always coming, and you've had it a month or two, and you think, "Oh my God, what's right. happened there?" Mind, I was thinking that about Hermes Allen now, actually, until till he turned the corner in the spring. Well, but some of them just need time, time to mature and get mentally and physically. But they must be trained to, to, the, to the minute to win these yeah. point of points now and then, yeah. mustn't they? Yeah, but so yeah, some obviously are. So you you need to know what you're buying, yeah, you're buying yeah, off, yeah. and you, you rely on your people to buy them for you. But I've always had the thing: once they're through that stable gate, front gate, they're all worth the same. Them right, and okay. train them all the same. You can't be looking, oh God, be careful because it costs this or it costs that. You get on and train them. Okay. Happy? Yeah, absolutely. Well, one thing left to do now. We want uh, your, your best Cheltenham chance. I'm going to be brave and go brave man's game. <clears throat> Johnny Deneen, your Cheltenham nap, please. This is spur the moment stuff. One horse, right, for viewers now, and they're all going to be watching for Paul Nichols, right? Right. Some of them will be watching for you, okay? One horse that will definitely win. 2023 Chapman Festival? I think I'd go uh, Fakir Duderi if he doesn't run on Saturday. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> this is coming out on, on Sunday. Oh, okay. So he's going to be running on Saturday. Right. Well, I okay, so I do you want a plan I, B that we can edit out? I, I'd prefer that he, he didn't run on... on uh, okay, give us a plan B then. Okay. Uh, I'll go with Home by the Lee, actually. In the stairs hurdle? Yeah, yeah. Home by the Lee I have a feeling that will win the stairs hurdle, yeah. Okay, and one that you don't train, Paul, one that you fancy in any of the other races? I'll tell you what mine is. My banker of the Cheltenham Festival is Edward Stone in the Champion Chase. I think he will win. Interesting. I think it's quite an open race. Um, um, Nicky's horse um, in the Champion Hurdle. I think he'll win. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> what are we laughing at? He's 
Two to seven. Yeah, well, you said what will win. <laughs> okay. I just said he will oh, win. You're but, you know, I well, thought that was sarcasm. Yeah, no, no. You know, there's no, a lot of people fancy Slate Man now, isn't it? But no, you said what will win. And I think Constitution Hill. Constitution Hill. You're right. Hill. The winner's a winner. I mean, he, you, you just look back at the fight in fifth. He was just like, unbelievable. And, it came to, and you think you beat John Bone after the track last year. He, he is just a beast. And if he's there in the top, top form, I don't care what goes, he'll win. Yeah. That's, that's just my opinion. I you presume know? he's the one horse that if you could just get into into this yard here. He wouldn't mind. Do you know, uh, we could all bought him back along at the Doncaster sales, and I remember asking Tom Malone about him, he said, no, he's not for you. But I think everybody said the same. Yeah. And it just shows you sometimes you can get lucky and buy one like that, and it turns out to be a superstar. Mm. So yeah, he's a proper horse, and uh, yeah, it'd be, you know, um, what they, whether they stay hurdling with him or, or whether they go chasing will be interesting. I suspect if he wins a champion, he'll probably stay hurdling, but yeah, he, 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 to me, he's the one that if you had to have one better than me and it was safe, no matter what the price, it would be him. Yeah, he's your kind of price. Ah, uh, he's a certain, yeah, of course he is, is right, yeah. But he, he's, he's, he's going to be short, but he, he looks a monster, horse is right. He, he does, does look a monster. Well, Paul, thanks very much. Yeah, it's been yeah. a pleasure thanks, thanks, thank you. Yeah. joining thank you, you here, much. having a chat, and uh, uh, very, very best to look at Cheltenham. Hopefully, Brave Man's game will shove it up Johnny's backside and, <laughs> and prove what a good horse he is. Yeah, well, hopefully. Well, I, look, I think he's proved what a good horse he is at Kempton on Boxing Day. It's just whether he can do the same now at Cheltenham. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to it. And as I said before, I think he's got a lovely chance and um, we'll be doing our best. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank and you that's a wrap. Me.